Okay, Rich, what are we playing this week then? So this week I thought we'd play Jetpack for the ZX Spectrum. So this is actually one of the most important games in the history of British gaming. This was made by the com a company called Ultimate, who would later rename themselves Rare. So this is basically the game that made Rareware as a force in the video gaming industry. They built their company on this game, effectively. It also was important for the ZX Spectrum because this is one of the first games put on the system that was sort of a very polished, fast action experience, much like the sort of thing that people would see on the Atari 2600 at the time. Mm -hmm. But here it was done in a high resolution and for half the price, really. Hmm. Have you got any experience with the game at all? No, never played it before. Do you want to try it out then? Yeah, let's go. So this game is kind of like a mixture of Joust and Defender. So okay. you've got the movement from Joust, but you've also got the sort of left and right fire, laser firing from Defender. And the aim of each stage is to rebuild your spaceship and then fill it with fuel. So you want to be collecting the pieces and then putting them in the right position and then filling up with fuel and then going back to the spaceship when it's full of fuel and it sort of flies off to the next stage. Okay. It's quite a simple game. Simple arcade game. Right, it's loaded. Okay. I'm putting Kempston. Kempston. Sorry. Okay. Ready? Right, you ready then? Yeah. Now here's your spaceship. You've got to okay. pick up the middle section and you've lost the life. <laughs> what? <laughs> pick up the middle section there and then uh, move it over. On Just fly top. it above it and it'll okay, drop cool. and attach. That's it. Now what? The fire button shoots the bad guys as well, but yep. it's usually best to stay on these platforms. Yep. That's it. Gotcha. You seem like you've got the hang of it already. <laughs> being nice to you and just dropping it on your head. Oh, fuck. You had to say it, didn't you? Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, you could have shot them. Ooh. Up, up and away. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> I Got think it. you can just hold the button down to an extent, can't you? Yeah, you can. Right, now you've got to get back to your ship. Easy. That's it. Hey. Stage one done. This has uh, 16 stages, but it doesn't actually have an ending, so we're just going to be playing the game for points. I can't duck. I'm dead. <laughs> you got your arse hands in, <laughs> Of course, you were just sort of getting used to it, weren't you? Well, I lost a life without even doing anything. <laughs> yeah, prior to making this game, um, Rare or, or Ultimate, or whatever you want to call them, they were um, making arcade games. Yeah? Yeah. Notable um, inclusions? There were some that had some reasonable popularity, but um, they're so secretive of what they've actually done in the past that until recently people had very little idea of what they actually made. And the only reason that they've sort of learnt a few of these now is they've started looking through the um, ROMs of arcade games for their names. Oh. Yeah. Because one of the games that they made was a game called Blueprint, which was actually reasonably popular. That, that game got... Um, Ported to a bunch of machines. That was actually it was actually ported to ah, it was actually ported to the C sixty four and the Atari fifty two hundred and such. And you can kind of see that it's made by the same people as well because of the in Blueprint you're sort of building a machine out of parts which sort of slot together. So this game actually is somewhat reminiscent of Blueprint in that way of you building this machine out of bits and pieces that you've got to take from different areas. Yeah. There's rumours that they made some pretty major games as well, or designed some pretty major games, but nobody knows for sure with a lot of these. So they were pretty big figures really in the in British gaming. Mm -hmm. They were there before most of the most of everybody else and that sort of explains why their Spectrum games were the most advanced, you know, from the beginning. Mm hmm I mean, obviously, other people caught up with them later on. <laughs> Bastard in thing. Oh, there you go. This game was actually in um, Donkey Kong 64 as well, you know. What's it? Did you ever play Donkey Kong 64? Not once? really. No. I didn't have an uh, N64 when that was all happening. I had a PlayStation. Yeah, there's some medals that you can collect in that. I think one of them is a medal for doing Donkey Kong, the original Donkey Kong arcade game. Right. And the other one is a medal for doing this, basically. So it's sort of, you know, Nintendo's major game. Yeah, he killed you. But you saw me firing. Right, oh, come on. Dear. 
I want to have a decent showing here. Oh, fuck. That would have killed me. Putting it in the corner. Left wheel. Uh, 0203. See if I can get to the third spaceship. Well, oh, probably not because these enemies are horrible, aren't they? Well, actually, they're more like um, fluffy enemies, aren't they? The ones that are horrible, I think. <laughs> what? Get out! Lean. You've got to be careful there, aren't you? It's because they don't want you to clash with the platforms, so they're stopping you from going anywhere near them. That's not done yet. Don't fuck. Mm -hmm. Don't fuck. Don't fuck. No, no, please, no. I think it's alright anyway. Oh. Go on. Go on, Bennett. <laughs> Pixels. Points, points, points make prizes. That's the first time I've done a first time without losing a life. Drop. No, dead. Oh, we changed direction. <laughs> oh, just let me get to the second spaceship, then I'm happy. <laughs> oh, oh! He dodged every bullet! <laughs> you really managed it there. Okay, Rich, do you, what do you think about the game then? I think this is quite a good showing for the Spectrum, actually, for the time it came out. Obviously, this is the time still of Atari 2600 games mainly. It's early 1983. There's not a whole lot of action games on the Spectrum that are of this quality, you know. Mm. This does Atari-style gameplay whilst being fast and fluid, and it's also got high-resolution graphics. I mean, if you compare it to Joust, which came out the same year as this, or possibly around the same time even, mm -hmm on the Atari, I mean that was very low colour, obviously yeah. lower res than this. Mm -hmm. This has issues with colour clash to an extent, obviously that's not Not that much though, Atari. I did notice yeah. that. For, for the Spectrum, uh, colour clash is its problem most of the time. Yeah, it but is. But this doesn't really clash too badly. The design of this sort of takes into account the clash reasonably, doesn't it? Mm. It's just clashing when the enemies sort of pass over each other mainly. Yeah. So all around, this competes quite well with its uh, main competitor, the 2600 at the time, mm -hmm. really, you know. And the game, it, I think it must have cost less than £10 to buy, whereas Atari games were about 20 quid back then, which is 60-odd nowadays really yeah well a week's maybe worth a little, wages really. maybe a little bit more so you could buy something that was up to the quality of atari 2600 you know for much less at this time half the price yeah mm. so i think it's a great showing all around really and it's easy to see how this game could take off so much on the spectrum and they i think that i heard that they made about a million pounds on this game wow. so back in those times that's not bad really for a smallish company that's you know? quite amazing really it's their first game it res results in them making a whole load of other games which was success as well so yeah i mean it's got a reasonable concept it has the physics from um, has the physics from games like joust mixed with the firepower from defender really isn't it it's quite impressive you know you can half fill the screen with lasers to an extent can't you yep. and uh for the most part, the collision detection, obviously there's some issues with the platforms and such, but it's not terrible when you get used to it, really. Mm. What do you reckon, then? Yeah, reasonable outing for the uh, Spectrum, really. Yeah. You're not going to expect the best sound because it's got that B-pub and no onboard sound. But apart from that, the game's fluid. It's, it's very playable. It's very replayable. Um, the enemies are quite varied and and tricky sometimes to control with oh, you did kind of keep trying to play it didn't you as well you uh, noticed that you were sort of more addicted to trying to get a bit further in yeah the game, my interest know? peaked over so, time yeah see, in a lot of atari games uh chris sort of gets fed up you know fairly early but he was sort of more involved here and bit, eight times out of ten it's because my hand is killing me because <laughs> yeah. of the control you just played through this yeah didn't you, you yeah. were like i'm gonna carry on playing it anyway i had to get forward to that second <laughs> ship even though i didn't make it i had yeah. to try so what are you going to score it then, Rich? Well, I think this is an above-average game, definitely, like I said, for the reasons I've already mentioned. But I'm not sure if it actually stands up to the very best on the Atari 2600 from this time period, mm. really. I mean, you've already got... I'm not 
really even sure if I prefer this to Joust. I don't think I do. I, think, I don't. I think I prefer to play Joust from the same year for the two-player option, even though there's there's less progression in Joust, isn't mm -hmm. there? Yeah. This has different stages to an extent mm -hmm. where the difficulty ramps up. So there are a lot of there are a lot of trade-offs between this and that. Mm -hmm. But I do think that I still prefer games like Joust, but not by a hell of a lot. So with that in mind, I can't give this like a full five out of five. Mm -hmm. But I think I can give it a borderline four out of five because yeah. I think it, it. There are a lot of games out at the time that were worse than this in multiple aspects. You know, this is this is a very respectable first game. Yeah. So what are you going to score it then? Well, this is interesting because I'm actually going to score it higher than you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for all of the reasons you've said, I am going to give it a four, but not a borderline four. I'm going to give it a high four, yeah. and there is one and one only reason for that, which I'll get to in a second. The reason. I mean, this does have a two-player, and two-player is really important to yeah. me, but it's alternating two-player, yeah. so that doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> that doesn't count, whereas Joust does. That's why I prefer Joust over this. Uh, two-player uh, uh, at the same time. The reason I'm giving this a high four is because without this game, you don't have Rareware, and yeah. you don't have Rare, and you don't have any of those fantastic games that came afterwards. So this opened the door to the, to the brothers... Yeah, and it it made sure that they were there to to feature in all of our gaming <laughs> memories to come. So for that reason and that reason only, I'm going to give it a little a little bit more than you say <laughs> a high four. Okay, guys, that's Jetpack for this week. A really really good game, and it cannot be stated enough. No this, no rare. Yeah. So guys, if you liked it, give us a like. Tell us what you think by leaving us a comment, and always subscribe to the channel because we're releasing great new content like this every week. And we'll see you next week with another game, guys. Take care. See ya.